one night, two telescopes, and a list of cosmic wonders. Can I capture the universe, or will this all go a bit pear-shaped? Mission, capture 10 plus deep sky objects before sunrise. Either way, I'm posting all my findings to my Discord channel, so they'll already know how I got on. But regardless, let's start at the beginning. And what does any Brit do when faced with unfathomable odds? Time for a cup of tea. I remember studying astronomy as an outside course at university. It's an exercise of maths against the brain. Almost every dimension, every image, every concept stretches the human mind beyond what it's evolved to comprehend. Your brain struggles to comprehend the distance between a million and a billion, usually wildly underestimating how much bigger a billion is. So how on earth can it begin to comprehend a light year, a quark, a solar system? This is the exact exercise that fascinates every human about looking into the stars. You can literally look through time. Light travels faster than anything we know, yet the size of the universe is so vast much of the stars that we see are actually showing us what was happening at the time of the dinosaurs. And if this doesn't give you a sense of awe, then little will. Astronomy has long been something I've loved, but it's always come at a significant cost in terms of time, complexity and money. There was an era of massive telescopes bootstrapping SLR cameras to them. With a tangle of wires, automated tripods, laptops wired and a bunch of software that took a short course to understand. These were the pioneers and it remains a great place of innovation in the semi-pro space. But it was never accessible for the average Joe. They looked enviously at the amazing views of the solar system and beyond, but less so at the cost and late nights spent manually configuring things. So when Seastar was suggested to me by one of my Discord members, I thought, hmm, interesting. When I was asked by a second, I took a closer look, and when a third commented, I thought it was something I was obviously missing. And Gee whiz, have times changed? Now, I've been testing the S50 and S30 for many months. I wanted to undertake my usual long-term tests, but I also enjoy the hidden gem of the east side of Scotland, those long, dark, clear winter nights. And there's no better way to cover it than with a nighttime marathon. Now, both models are identical in operation and in lots of ways. You turn it on, log into the app, connect to your telescope, and you're in control. Now, it's mandatory to pause and watch whenever the telescope starts opening its arm because well, it's just very cool. There is a definite underrated space for just cool design features in hardware these days. As someone who's experienced more than their fair share of poor apps, credit is due here to the developers. They've just done an excellent job. It's intuitive, it's simple, and it's compelling to use. They point out all the best things to look at based on your location every night, so you can have a bit of a guided tour or you can have complete control. It really is that simple. Watch, 
just click your target and then click locate and it does all of the work for you. It locates, tracks, focuses and builds time lapses automatically. They've reduced all of those hours of tinkering to a two click process. I've honestly taken more steps to make toast. Now the S30 and the S50 aren't really easy to compare. The S50 isn't better as such. It's a bit like asking which photography lens is better. It obviously depends. The S50 has a 50 millimeter lens, so this naturally lets you get much closer to things, but this means the S30 can give you broader shots of the sky. The S50 is definitely portable, but the S30 is just super dinky and it, it borders on hand luggage size. It ultimately doesn't matter. I'd be delighted with either. They both succeed with flying colours at doing what they intended, opening the night sky up to the entire world and letting us gaze in wonder whilst removing all of those entry hurdles. And how did I do? Well, let me reveal. The Wizard Nebula. It's a cloud of ionised hydrogen where new stars are actively forming. It's like a nursery for stars. You are looking at light from the Bronze Age on Earth. Bode's Galaxy, one of the closest spiral galaxies to our own Milky Way. At the heart lurks a supermassive black hole, about 70 million suns. Pac-Man Nebula, it's rich in Bok globules, dense, dark clouds of gas and dust that may collapse into new stars almost like stellar cocoons, hiding new solar systems in the making. Fireworks Galaxy, named due to its extraordinary numbers of supernovae. At least 10 over the last century have been observed there. The Moon, actually unusually large for a satellite. The Sun is about 400 times larger, but about 400 times further away. Hence, solar eclipses work. No other known planet has this perfect cosmic alignment. Giant Hercules Cluster, the brightest and best known globular cluster in the Northern Hemisphere. To the naked eye, it looks like a fuzzy star, but through the sea star, you can see it's actually over 300,000 stars in one cluster. The Needle Galaxy. This is a galaxy we're seeing edge on, hence its shape. What you're looking at is actually over 1 billion stars. Jupiter and its satellites, the Crowbar Galaxy, the Whirlpool Galaxy, the Western Rosette Nebula, the Spider Nebula, the Fishhead Nebula, the Flaming Star Nebula, Mars, the Red Planet, part of the Veil Nebula, the Andromeda Galaxy, All of these have been automatically stacked, taking photo after photo and bringing out the details whilst you watch. You can AI enhance images and remove noise. And it does a remarkable job of filtering out any street lights and glow from houses. One of the most nifty tools in both is mosaic mode. With a single tap, the telescope automatically captures and stitches together wide field images. You can photograph objects that are too large to fit in a single frame, so no manual tiling is needed. And it's not just astrophotography and filming. This is a super handy device as a daytime telescope as well. That supremely powerful lens works just as well during the day, letting you capture some great images. Its ability to track targets means that you can capture some seriously impressive close-ups of birds, planes, boats, or ridiculously distant post-it notes. Perfect for the nosy neighbor. Thank you to the many Patreons and Discord members who pointed this out to me originally. This is such a powerful tool to bring the night sky to life. And it's really quite extraordinary how accessible this sort of technology has become. So if you've got a sea star already, then do post your best images in the Discord channel. 
I'd really love to see your best efforts and we can have a, a space off. If you haven't and you're interested, then I've added the links in the description. And for everyone else, let's just enjoy the universe for a moment.